Welcome to Forbidden Planet TV, I'm Andrew Sumner and today I'm sharing with you the New York Comic Con panel for Titan Comics' epic Life is Strange comics featuring myself hosting but primarily featuring author Emma Vircelli, artist Claudia Leonardi and the mighty editor of Life is Strange, Phoebe Hedges. This is a great panel and I hope you enjoy it. Take care. <laughs> welcome to New York Comic Con 2021 Ooh. and welcome to the Titan Comics Life is Strange panel. Uh, my name is Andrew Sumner from Titan Comics, uh, also from Forbidden Planet TV. Check us out on YouTube. And, uh, and today our guests for the panel are author Emma Vircelli, artist Claudia Leonardi and for the first time, Phoebe mm. Hedges, editor of Drum Life roll. is Strange. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're too nice. How are you guys? Yeah, good. I, I wish I was really in New York because I haven't had a Shake Shack for far too many years. Yeah, so I'm, I'm feeling that. <laughs> if you're out there listening and you're in New York, quick, throw a burger at the screen. <laughs> yeah. throw, throw a burger over the Atlantic. <laughs> Bitch it. Just I, I miss New York Comic Con, but this is you know, the next best thing. <laughs> now, we have just published um, the latest issue one in our, uh, a number of sequences of issue one of our Life is Strange comic. And <laughs> what we all know is that after just publishing um, of that issue one, for, for an, a volume which is the overall title of this volume is Settling Dust. Issue two is coming in a couple of weeks. But more than that, what's coming, what's looming on the horizon is the epic conclusion of the Life is Strange comic that you guys have all been working so hard on <laughs> for such a long period of time. So, so can, I, can I ask all of you, we're back to talk about what's coming. And as usual with Life is Strange, we can't tell the fans that much. And but also what has been, it's uh, it's been such an explosive ride for all of you, an amazing journey. What did you all feel about working towards this amazing conclusion you've you've crafted? That was a very long question. Wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, I could have just gone. How do you feel about the, the, the closing conclusion about to start? And that would be much better. But anyway, after that word salad that I just delivered down the pipeline. Mm, tasty word salad. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> some, some dressing. Um, it it's weird. It's really it's gonna be quite emotional, I think, once we the adrenaline passes. Um, because we've been Although it's been slightly off and on and stop start, thank you, COVID and, and whatever else, it, it's been three years that Claudio and I have been doing this. So, and, and even in the gaps, certainly for me, it's not like I turn off from it. So it's been in my head for three years and, um, and now we're coming to the end. And it, it has been, I think, roller coaster is because there's been times where we're like, and this is going to be the end. Oh, no, it's not. Now we're throwing some stuff in. Now where are we going? Oh, this happened. That's cool. Oh, big ending. Cut. Like it's, we're as surprised as anyone else by some of the directions <laughs> it's gone in. And and now we're at this sort of epic conclusion. And I, I, I don't know about Claudia, but I'm feeling like this pressure to be like, got to bring this home, like in, in both senses of the word, but like hit the landing on this because, um, we can't blow it now <laughs> it's been great so far so um it's yeah it's been quite a ride and it's going to be quite emotional I think when I send that last script in yeah. and it's yeah, going to be emotional for all you Life is Strange fans at home as well yeah. what about yourself Claudia how are you feeling about it all well I'm very excited we finally got to the end <laughs> uh, of course i I know I'm going to be sad because, uh, you know, this is my first big comic I've been working on and it's been a constant for three years and a half, more than two years. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I, I'm going to be sad. And uh, I think uh, working on this comic uh, that, that is, um, it's based on a video game that I love. Uh, uh, has set uh, a very high standard for the next work to come. <laughs> <laughs> so downhill from here. Team, so, 
Yeah, I, I, I actually fear it's going to be all down here. But, uh, you're you're going to soar. That is absolutely not going <laughs> to be the case. Absolutely, there's no way, mate. That's not going to happen. Yeah, <laughs> you're all going to blast forth this amazing, amazing future based upon this epic piece of work that you, you, you <laughs> produced. And you're an eight brilliance, of course, everyone. Phoebe, you've been on board to the, in, originally in the editor seat. We had our mutual friend uh, Tolly yeah. Max. Hello, Tolly, if you're watching. But you've <laughs> been you've been on the book for a long time. So uh, how's it how's it how's it felt for you? Yeah, I mean, it might be a bit of a faux pas, but I actually hadn't played the game until I became onto the title. So I had the very unique experience of having read the comic and then played the game. <laughs> but now I just I. Having watched Holly like carry, like launch and carry this to be the sort of phenomenon that it is, to now try and bring that to a satisfying close is a lot of pressure. But well, of course, we had the first arc. So Andrew was with us. Andrew James launched it, then Tolly, uh, and then Phoebe. And it was actually really great the fact that you hadn't, you weren't as immersed because we were all like nerding out. And um, (laughs) it was really helpful having you coming on board with like kind of fresher eyes, so you were able to if we were just diving too deep into the fan pool, you could be like, <laughs> yay! <laughs> oh, yeah, I definitely, my first couple of meetings, catching up with Emma and AJ, who's are now in licensing, like, I was like, okay, and then this, and then this happens, and then, um, <laughs> yep, yep, I know everything. <laughs> and then devouring the Wikipedia direct, directly after, so. Now you're a master. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. The Zen master of life is strange. Uh, and actually, that was a great shout out to uh, another mutual friend of ours, Andrew James, a person in a previous incarnation who, when we were doing physical panels at New York Comic Con, I used to present these physical panels with. So if you're watching Andrew, and I'm sure you are, a big hello to you as well. And and guys, um, for each of you, and uh, we'll go flip the other way around. We'll start with you, Phoebe. What has been your favourite moment from the series so far? Ooh, I think my favourite moment has to be from the Coming Home 2 which went on sale in the summer. It's every scene in the Butterfly Sanctuary just took my breath away, just from sort of the art and their faces and then that sort of near, near mm-hmm. almost moment. And then it's, oh, no, I think I have a actually. Um, I just, <laughs> it's just such a romantic and sad scene that it, it's very quintessentially Life is Strange. <laughs> Uh, well said. I think that's a that's a great choice. What about yourself, Claudia? Oh, it's very difficult to choose just a moment in this comic, but I have to see to say that, uh, like Phoebe said, the romantic and very sad scenes, uh, all of them, uh, <laughs> Max's dreams uh, and the kisses and the hugs, the uh, pillow hugs. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> They all have a special place in my heart. Yeah, well said, mate. And Emma, come on, what have you got for us? Uh, it's it's so an embarrassment hard. of riches, right? It's really like, obviously, as, a, as the person who wrote them, it would be far too easy for me to like brush, uh, like dismiss bits and go, oh, I wish I'd done that better. But I actually, genuinely, with this series, I read, uh, Phoebe sent me some um, of the recent issues. We've not, I've not really had a chance to read the comic this last couple of years because comps just haven't happened. So I hadn't read them since scripting them. And um, getting the issues and reading them, there's a, there's a particular scene, it is in Coming Home. Uh, oh God, New Orleans is in Coming Home, isn't it? Yes, yeah. Yeah. Um, I actually got quite, reading the, the Katerina Memorial bit, because there was a bit of a gap since reading it and I at the words especially the last couple of years I've been through they hit me quite hard because I think I had enough distance from reading it but in terms of what my favorite is really really hard but I'm gonna uh counter I love obviously the bittersweet romance because that's what life is strange is but also it's about friendship so actually I think one of my favorite conversations to counter that is Max and Waves Chloe in the caves um, when they've kind of had their fallout and Rachel's just told them to sort it out and yeah. left them to it. And you have that it's sort of them just kind of falling into that friendship again. Um, because yeah, they, they're both things to each other depending where they are. And that's why I really like that. Uh, but oh, bloody difficult, really difficult. <laughs> Cause I love all our new characters as well. And like every time 
we get some cool uh, getting to reveal Pixie finally uh, of what what she is. Yeah. Um, you know, Tristan appearing. Like we, it's been three years, so there's yeah, there's a lot to look back on, really. <laughs> well, just a lot of great stuff to look back on, and and you've hit the nail on the head, really. I mean, Volume One uh, was collected back in 2019 now. And, uh, and now, of course, you know, with the sixth volume that you're working on that will be collected next year as Settling Dust, hopefully, uh, Max and Chloe, who are parted in volume one, hopefully, we'll see, maybe, are going to be reunited. Is there any part of that extended, uh, extended path towards potentially reunited that you've been, that be reuniting that you've been planning on or can talk about since the beginning? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know you can talk about it. Do, do you want yeah. to or are you able oh, to? Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's uh, any secret at this point what what we're working towards. I think the journey is is the important thing with the story. And um, I think we, I think we said in a couple of the interviews now, we're, the weird thing is, I, I think we'd always, certainly for me, the story's about them together. So, um we're building up now to something that I thought was going to happen a long time ago. And then I thought it was going to happen again. And then I thought it was going to happen again. And that doesn't mean I regret any part of the journey because every new chapter we've added has given us a chance to explore new things and like spend more time with characters like Tristan and the high seas who would not have existed if we'd stopped at four issues. So I do not regret the path we've taken. Um, but yeah, there's certain lines of dialogue. Um, yeah, there's stuff that I was kind of setting up for in the first three issues. So I, yeah, it, it feels weird to finally catch up to that. And certain elements uh, that, I mean, th things like the watches they've worn since the very beginning that Claudia's had to remember to draw on their wrist every single time, which she does amazingly because <laughs> it's it would be so easy to forget it, but they've worn those watches since dust. Um, maybe they'll get to take them off. Yeah, right on. <laughs> I, I mean, you've again segued very nicely into what I was going to ask you, which is that you've all been creating parallel world, parallel world, worlds over the course of this story. Um, and be between the three of you, between the entire creative and editorial team, you've been spinning the plates on all this complex continuity. What have been your group efforts to say so true to the through line of your narrative? and get it so spot on time and time again because it just can't reading it as as a as a reader as a fan it can't be easy who wants to jump in i don't want to take over <laughs> i mean i would say for me it's i mean emma and claudia both do it so wonderfully you know emma scripts do you write them in different colors as well now i do that... now yeah yeah Since claudia started drawing the pages in different colors i now write them in different colors yeah. as well <laughs> So that's very easy. And then as it develops, it's there's a scene actually in Coming Home Arc where it's the high seas and we haven't seen them in like an issue or two. So I was like, wait, her cost her hair's changed. Do we have I had to like mm -hmm. then go back and check, like, is it gonna make sense that it's changed? Is it gonna so it's just constantly rereading like the old issues and staying immersed in the world. So it I mean it really encourages fans to go back and check, which I always really think is <laughs> interesting and fun. Yeah, copious, copious amounts of notes. Like, I, we've got charts that I've chucked into the Dropbox that have, yes. like, you know, literally Excel sheets that have, <laughs> here's the journey, this is the high seas in dust, high seas in, in waves, Chloe in dust, this is Max over here, this is, like, this is where the Hamlet cast are at that point, this is how many hours it takes to get between stops on this road trip. Is it feasible that they would stay overnight here? No, because it's only a couple of hours drive. So, like remembering that they have to have a hotel. These ones are staying in a van, but these guys don't have a van to sleep in. Like, and that's not even including poor Claudia having to remember which hair color they have in this, in this world, or Andrea's obviously managing that as well. Um, yeah, so lots of notes, lots of spreadsheets. I mean, we've got far too many notes. We've got, we've said before in interviews, we have like a document that's every member of the cast of Hamlet, their real name, their background, who they are. Obviously, we don't need any of that, but it, it's... I loved it, though. Us. Yeah. That was, when I came on the series, I went through the entire sort of, we've got like a folder, and I just went through all of it, like, okay, this is where we are. This is who everyone is. And I was like yeah. so ready for them to come up, and I was like, what, what about... 
So it's a shame that we've got not got to see like more of them, but it's we know it's there. We know, we know they're real. We know they really exist. <laughs> in yeah, because it's like your version of the the series, the showrunners series yeah. bible, right? Mm, and um, pretty much. Yeah. And I'm constantly blown away. And I'll, I'll let Claudia speak in a minute. A by Claudia and Andrea's interpretation, so how clear it always is, but also by by the readers and how. Um, we've really made it challenging. Like, it, it's not easy. Even when I was reading these issues at BBC, because I've not read them in comic form, so there's me reading them. And, like, it's one thing when I'm writing it, because in my mind I'm switching between and I've got my notes. But when you're reading it in a comic, it's sudden, like, with a page turn, suddenly you, there's got to be, it's got to be clear enough that you've suddenly switched. And like the Butterfly Sanctuary scene, I literally played with the fact that they're having the same, com different people are having the same conversation, so we have them passing behind a tree in one world but the others come out the other side of the tree in in the other world like these are complicated things and the readers constantly blow me away with how tuned into it they are and how willing they were to kind of play the game of of reading these comics you know yeah i i think i think you've yeah, the great thing about life is strange is it it is such a supremely informed and interactive fan base that yeah that, that but it's great to have fans that you can interact with on that level i think it's a, a it's a a beautiful thing um you I, what you were just talking about was making me think of uh, another question that lauren our, our our pr manager and i were banding around before that we were recording this panel and i'll start with you this time with claudia what music do you listen to when you're working on Life is Strange? Actually, I don't really listen to music because if I started to listen to, say, the soundtrack from the game, I would yeah. be totally lost in my thought uh, and my concentration would go all over the place. I would have to go and search for, uh, uh, I don't know, the beginning video, the cutscenes from the games, uh, <laughs> some, somebody else playing the game. And I would be too distracted. So I usually listen to podcasts and uh, YouTube videos, uh, usually the, you know, on the longer side. So I just uh, keep my mind focused uh, one half on my work uh, and the other half uh, doesn't have the possibility to get lost uh, <laughs> uh, now, now by the music. I, I think that's a, a, a wonderful answer and I, I find it fascinating. Just to name drop terribly for a second, I was talking to Dave Gibbons recently and he was talking about, how when, about the fact that when you're an artist, you can listen to, you can listen to verbal audio like a podcast, like a story being told, and it mm. doesn't interrupt your mental process. But I put that, trash TV on. Yeah, when that's I'm... something you can't do when you're a writer, right? <laughs> when you're a writer, you're coming up with words, you can't listen to other words. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah so trash TV for you then, Emma. Yeah, my, my experience is very different as an artist and a writer. As a writer, yeah. when I'm doing Life is Strange, it's silence. I don't even have music, I have nothing. I just have my own thoughts <laughs> or me muttering as I act the scenes out. But I have to write in silence. Uh, but when I'm drawing, not so much when I'm penciling, because I've got to think a bit when I'm penciling, but certainly when I get into inking, then it's just, you know, whatever rubbish reality TV show I can put on in the background, because it's just company. As Claudia yeah. says, it means you can like, half your mind's focused on that. So you can let the creative side flow into the work, and not overthink it. Yeah, I think I think that's brilliant. How about yourself, Phoebe? Do you tend to listen to music while you work? Not. Not when I'm typically reading and editing because I get pretty lost. But when obviously being able to means doing some of the sort of behind the scenes copy and whatnot, Life is Strange is so sort of linked to the Seattle punk scene. I don't know why I said that in quotes. It's literally the Seattle punk scene. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, Seattle's a real place and that punk yeah, scene is real. Fictional. I've heard there's this really cool band called the High Seas actually in yeah. Seattle. Yeah. We should go see them. Yeah, they're really good. <laughs> Um, with Steph and the High Seas, but obviously the most famous sort of one of the most famous bands to come out of Seattle, as far as I know, is Nirvana, which is cool. I was, was kind of surprised. I had I discovered that whilst everything life is strange. So, I thought, <laughs> oh, so that's my foundation for sort of the music that the High Seas kind of makes in a very ah. weird way. So 
that's how I sort of, that's where I start. But also there's this band called Bear's Den, which gives me very much like the, it reminds me of the original soundtrack of the game very wow. much. So, so it depends what kind of mood I'm in, but between mm. heavy, you know, punk and rock or nice kind of indie guitar in and out. <laughs> yeah. I know what Claudia means about the game soundtrack though. If I ever do put it on, sometimes when I'm writing, I'm like, Oh, maybe I'll put the game soundtrack on, but it's too, it's like a rabbit hole. Cause then yeah. you just, you just want to go back and play the game again. <laughs> so it doesn't help for working. <laughs> Now, now, staying with this, uh, the world of music, and uh, those are two great reference points, uh, there, there, Phoebe. Burst End, good choice. Um, <laughs> so, Emma, how do you approach writing the lyrics for the High Seas songs? I love it. <laughs> so my, <laughs> my kind of past life before comics was I, I wrote songs anyway. Like, I'm a singer-songwriter. I said them, not professionally, like I... Singer songwriter for fun. I've been in a few bands. Singer songwriter, and... actor, presenter. Is there nothing yeah. that you haven't done, mate? <laughs> Generally, anything that earns a decent salary are the things I haven't done. <laughs> anything that's like whimsical and uh, and you're poor from doing, I've done all of those. Um, so yeah, I used to do. I used to, I used to sing in a jazz band. So it's like kind of this other uh, life before. And um, yeah, I love writing songs. And so when I knew I'd get the chance to put a band in, I didn't know how far I'd be allowed to go in terms of uh, actually kind of writing out lyrics and things, but it was so useful. And obviously, again, back when we did Dust, for the most part, we didn't even know we were going to get more after Dust. But the the first, the Ghost in Your Own Time song for Nice was in Dust. And that was very much, uh, you know, quite obviously for anyone who's reading it, it was... It wasn't a song plucked out of nowhere. It's clearly like resonating with, with Chloe and Max's story. Um, and I think even back then, I in my mind, there was some kind of, I knew we wouldn't get to explore it because I thought we only had four issues, but I thought there's a reason that this song resonates in some way. So when we had more time, I love the fact that we were able to keep kind of tying it back in and then having the other, you know, that forever is a long time, uh, thrown in as well and then being able to reveal pixie and understanding where those lyrics came from so I, I think in terms of how I write them I, I I don't know how we write but um I have tunes that they're they're not just I, I sent Phoebe a really terrible recording I it was to... wonderful <laughs> so bad because I just got my husband to play guitar because I, I I play on piano so I write on piano but I always with the high C's obviously like I'm imagining them on guitar so it's like I knew Dex's part the keyboards because I could do that but I needed my husband to play guitar so he played Dwight and then um I I was trying to sing but I kept forgetting my own lyrics so it's this terrible video of me going da 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 oh I don't remember the lyrics da, 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 sorry <laughs> don't know the lyrics for this bit blah, blah, blah. And then sent it for some reason <laughs> to Phoebe. It was it was genuinely amazing. <laughs> I will record a proper version, but um, uh, it, yeah, I find lyrics actually easier to write than script because there's format to them. If you know what the tune is, you you've got like a rhyming pattern and you've got a format to put lyrics into. Um, but I'm just so happy that we had the time to be able to make them a more intrinsic part of the story than they were in the first arc. <laughs> no, I think that's been beautiful to, to to watch that evolve now i'm going to go into some relatively uh fast-paced questions which are which are character based so um there's a couple of things that we'd just like to get through for the benefits of the audience um so one is one of those questions is did you always know that max's story would end with the significant event that it does end with that's very oblique, isn't it? But you know what I mean. I think we can say we can say. Yeah, we can say. That's it. out, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. there was a storm at the end of coming home too. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. There we, we, go. Know, we can talk about there that. There we go. <laughs> uh, no, not expressly. Um, I think for me, Max's journey was always one about coming to terms with herself um, and kind of facing up to her own guilt, processing her own emotions. Which obviously, I'd always seen it as like this internal storm. Um, but to be honest, because I started writing so long ago and working with Square, I genuinely didn't know what I'd be able to get away with, whether we'd be allowed to actually make that an external storm. Like, um, so I always knew it was an internal storm she'd be facing, but it's a, 
we were allowed to go more epic than I originally envisaged. <laughs> Brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. And what has it been like exploring Victoria through the last few issues? Ooh, nice. Yeah, <laughs> nice. <laughs> what a rubbish word. Um, I was always, I mean, I like all the characters from the original game. Um, and if we could, we'd want to do it like a chapter on all of them, I think. Like, we'd love to. But uh, Victor getting to throw her in was a, such a boon because when we started, again, back when I started this, the, the pretty much the line, this is before Life is Strange 2 was out, so pretty much the line we were working to is everyone's gone. You, the, you can't use anyone. And it's only as time went on, gradually, you know, things shifted a bit and, and then something would come up. We're like, oh, OK, you can, you can use that. So Victoria was a real surprise. I wasn't expecting to be able to use her, um, but it was really nice uh, to, I love redemption stories. I really love redemption stories and getting to kind of experience her after what she went through, we, we assume at the end of the game, depending on how you played it. But uh, yeah, she's a changed person. And I love that we can then use Zach as kind of an external embodiment of what she sees that she used to be and like, uh, yeah, so in her own small way, she's going through her own character arc there and like, um, yeah, having her own little redemption, I think, which is nice. Uh, but Claudia obviously had to draw her, so I don't know, <laughs> just like from your side. Yeah, well, for me, it was uh, very fun to draw her. I wasn't uh, expecting to take her out of the game and uh, be able to use her, as you said, but uh, it, it was fun. Uh, yeah, I think we were pushing the boundaries a bit with her because it was it was actually uh, Erin on the the team at Square who we, we we knew obviously I knew Rachel I I had the story set with Rachel playing Ophelia, um, but uh, I knew I had other I had someone else in mind that I was thinking of for playing Ophelia in um, in Dust uh, and then it was actually Erin uh, who who said oh well there's Victoria and there was this, this moment in the room like can we make that work can we make that like it's it's it, but then actually, yeah, looking back at Before the Storm and thinking of her needing to escape and like, yeah, I think I think we managed to make it work. And it was just a great excuse to get to, yeah, spend some time with her character, really. Brilliant. Um, I mean, the whole the whole series is such a, a beautifully emotive series. And one of the things that I know we always comment upon within Titan HQ when the, when the artwork drops, uh, well, it doesn't drop for you, Claudia. You're creating it out of the <laughs> It just drops. It, it drops for us out, <laughs> out of the, from the brilliance of your desk is how wonderful your facial expressions are in your art. And could you talk a bit about your process for just capturing those visuals? Well, first of all, thank you. I actually mostly follow Emma's directions. Uh, she is very clear on the on her script, uh, on the expression that the character have to have uh, in a certain moment. And from that, I, I use a lot of references. I use Google images, uh, or if um, there is nothing that really uh, is useful to me in that moment, I usually take a lot of photos of myself. Uh, of uh, my boyfriend, uh, of everyone I have around, and I use them to you know, capture the expression. What was it? It was ages ago. It was like oh, easily over a year ago. I remember you did actually send me once a, a photo of your boyfriend as Max, and it was it was <laughs> <laughs> he was like posing to do like, and it was it was beautiful. I mean, he's a, he's yeah. a very beautiful man, so it worked fine. <laughs> yeah, you, I think he was. Uh, Max uh, and someone else uh, in the same uh, panel. He was doing, uh, you know, all the characters. <laughs> it was amazing. It was sort of strange. <laughs> it's tricky. And, and I'm so grateful that Claudia does it so brilliantly because, and I think probably because of the way I, when I draw a comic as well, like there's, I'm probably evil as a writer in some ways because I want everything to be between the cracks. Like I very rarely want to state obviously what someone's feeling it all has to be in the visuals and that that does put a lot of pressure on on the artist um but I, yeah it worked it, like you just do it brilliantly so <laughs> so brilliantly phoebe what's your experience like when you see the artwork for the first time i i mean working on settling dust genuinely have like 
teared up looking at some of these inks like there's a page coming up in issue two and oh I saw I saw the layouts and I knew it was going to be special and then the inks came in and I immediately had to send it to um Jake just when you sent me yes mm. send it to Emma send it to my fellow editor Jake um I just needed someone to see it because I just I was in there like almost in tears like oh my god it's finally happening <laughs> No, Claudia is so talented, and I mean, you're going to go so far. It's it's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, again, you know, as were these are the kind of things you can openly say and can openly absorb in an unembarrassed manner as you're roaring towards the end <laughs> of a great piece of work like you guys have, have produced. But um, I think for all, everybody attached to Life is Strange. It's just such a great shot window for everything you guys are capable of doing. And, and I think I remember, I remember when from a company perspective, we were first talking about, shall we do this? You know, are we interested in, in, in taking this IP, you know, into the comic book space? And we all really wanted to do it, but I think everybody thought it was going to be one thing, you know, another great licensed book, which we do really well at time, but it's actually become this amazing work of art that you mm. guys have produced out of Hulk off. And the fact that it's part of an existing license just happens to be by the by. It's got this, while sharing the universe, it's got this separate artistic high level energy to itself. So, you know, great work from everybody. Oh, thank you. I feel it's very fantastic. lucky. Yeah. Like this is, Hopefully someone else will uh, give me the opportunity to write something after this. This might be the one and only thing I ever write. Who knows? But the yeah, to be given the opportunity as an artist to to write something uh, like this and then be allowed to get away with what I did is, yeah, is really special. And like Claudia was saying earlier, I feel like, yeah, it's all downhill from here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I really don't think that's going to happen. Also, a big shout out to Andrea as well. So uh, yeah. it just uh, yeah. just phenomenal work on, on every level. Are there any moments, guys, in the series that you wished in, in an alternate universe for yourselves that you could have explored further? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Always. Well, I think we've, we've all said we'd quite like to do the High Seas spin-off. <laughs> the spin-off comic. Um, I'd love to have spent more time looking at Tristan's backstory. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's always more you want to tell, but we just have to hope we've taken the space we had. And we've been allowed to put a lot of slow, emotional stuff into this comic, which is really unusual. Um, and that's what's made it feel so special, I think, because we've been given that space by Titan to and square to just sort of be able to play with it and like yes you are allowed and I, I mean especially in the last arc there's time where I kind of went in there saying I want to have like a couple of pages with very little happening <laughs> I want to focus on these moments and um there's not actually there's a lot of comic projects that wouldn't let you do that because pages are money <laughs> so um so I think we've actually been able to get a lot out of of the emotion of the story but there's always going to be things we've you know, we'd wish we could spend more time telling. Yeah, right on. Um, and this is something we've all talked about quite a bit in the past, but uh, for the purposes of New York Comic Con, the New York Comic Con, Con panel we're in right now, what do you all think it is that keeps people, bringing people back to Life is Strange and exerts that power over the fan base? What, what is in there in the DNA that you respond to personally or you think of people do? Who wants to jump in? I'll, I'll go. Um, I have a lot of feelings, but life is strange. Um, <laughs> I mean, you kind of said it earlier, like the strength of the Life is Strange story, even outside of the fact that it's a licensed comic and also game, like it's such a strong locomotive, like coming of age story. You know, it's, I have played the game and now the comic has this really incredible, like queer love story. Like it's just these very sort of, strong like resonating themes and concepts which we then put a little nice life is strange and time travel story over <laughs> which I think just touched so many people because even though you can't control time or turn invisible or jump realities or see the certain futures you know you see parts of yourself in Pixie in Max in Chloe and Tristan like it's such a 
they're just such strong characters. And I mean, Emma as a writer, I have never known someone who has so much backstory for characters that have so little dialogue. <laughs> <laughs> and I love it though. So I just, you know, wish we could explore it more, wish we get a chance to explore it in the future. I just, there's just such a well-roundedness to the story that must appeal to everyone because it's a phenomenal game and comic. I think empathy, yeah, empathy is a big part, isn't it? Um, Life is Strange, ha and not Life is Strange alone, there's a, there's a few titles doing it, but Life is Strange has an ability to um, channel, maybe because of their ownership over the storytelling in the games, obviously, you're, you, you, it is very much, I mean, we get thrown the question a lot, is this canon, is this canon? And I kind of, I get a bit frustrated at the question because with Life is Strange, like, I mean, obviously, if you're talking, is it part of the canonical Life is Strange universe? Yes, the comic is. If you're talking, is it canon storyline? What makes Life is Strange special is there is no canon storyline. It's, it's the story you play. So it's very personal and it's special. Um, and I think the characters, despite, you know, obviously people like Max and Alex having very special abilities, uh, it, there's still there's so much there that we can tap into and empathise with. Um, people got very protective over characters like Chloe, because they've known Chloe's it, it's I think there's a lot of stuff out there in stories and games where they're great and they're cool and we can like that character's cool but you're not necessarily in their head in the same way you are with something like Life is Strange so empathy is a big part of it I think yeah. I think I think that's I think that's very well said and and sort of related to the to, to the note of empathy one, one of the uh, one of the great things about doing these panels for New York Comic Con, is that not only are we speaking to uh, big fans of Life It's Strange, but we, we're speaking to big fans of the, the medium of comic books itself. So uh, <laughs> each of you have, have a different entryway into being an author, an artist, an editor. Uh, to close out on, what advice would you each give to people who are interested in working in the comic book industry? And um, Claudia, I'm going to start with you, mate. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, uh, I think the biggest advice I could give is uh, to try to enter into this uh, world of comic and uh, not to listen to your inner critic because uh, it's the worst critic you could find uh, in all your life and uh, to try not not wait to be perfect to, to try. Just, I don't know, it's difficult, but uh, <laughs> just like, put yourself out there and um, try. Yeah, I, 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 think that, I think that's very well said. Phoebe, what was your journey like to, uh, to become the editor of Life is Strange? Um, I'm very quite lucky. I graduated university, I did creative writing at university, I graduated into a job at Titan Comics, have worked my way up through the ranks. Um, I think hard work, it's always hard work, which is surprising for comics, which is so sort of informal and casual as a medium to read. Um, but no, hard work and, but now as an editor for look, who's looking for artists and writers, having an online presence genuinely just sort of priceless if you have something that an editor can latch onto and read and show other people that's how you get found basically so i find people anyway so <laughs> so you, you heard it here first right <laughs> one and only phoebe hedges right here that's i think that's great advice actually mate it's wonderful how about yourself emma so i think um first of all I mean, there's so many cliche answers we always give, but uh, comics are comics. And I think comics are not a stepping stone to films. They're not a stepping stone to your TV. They're not you wanting to write your book, but you want to get an artist to draw it. They are comics and they are their own medium. So I think um, you can be the best. You've got to have a story to tell. Like you've got to have a reason to want to love this medium um, and have a story that you want to tell and be passionate about it. And I'm not going to say anything trite like, you know, make a comic and then you'll get paid to make comics. No, that's probably not going to happen. But make a comic and you 
will be part of comics once you're you're a, some if you're at New York Comic Con, you're in the right place, you know. Uh, make that comic, get a table, sit behind it, sell the comic, get embedded, have a, an online presence, um, expect hard work. But also, and this is the slightly sometimes you're going to get lucky, um, which is lovely when it happens, but there's also the other side to it, which the, the passion for it. It sounds very arty and wanky, but the passion for it does have to supersede the need to earn money. It's a really sad fact. I mean, I, I've been freelance for 15 years now and I'm literally about to enter another chapter of my career where I want to focus on doing pitches and original stuff and finishing breaks. And I'm going into that with the knowledge that I've worked my butt off for a while. I've got some savings and now I'm going into a dead zone of no one's going to pay me to work on my own stories but you do it with the hope that there's going to be something at the end of that um so there's not to be doom and gloom about it but i think yeah it's less wanting to get into comics and it's more wanting to make a comic um and if you've got that story to tell and you've got a passion for that story then don't as claudia says don't listen to your inner critic don't let anyone tell you you can't do it because comics is one of those beautiful mediums where you don't need anything but yourself to do it um and yeah get a table at new york comic con <laughs> we'll see you there <laughs> yeah, I... and then hopefully then you're on a path and and you know you get lucky and 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 lovely things happen but it's i don't think there's any such thing as feeling like you're in it now and you can relax i've i've yeah. been doing it 15 years and i certainly don't feel like oh, i can sit back i'm in comics now nope every year is a another stress of wait what's next <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think that's very well said. Um, I, everybody I've, I've ever met who, who works within or adjacent to the comic book industry, the one thing they all have in common, myself included, you guys included, is it is 100% the thing they want to do more than anything else. And that's everybody I've ever worked with uh, in the comics business. Uh, you, you do it because you desperately want to do it. There are more effective ways to make a shitload of money or indeed <laughs> any money at all or have enough to be able to afford to eat a pot noodle for dinner. There's many mm -hmm. other ways to do that than working in the comics business. But it's an absolute passion play. If you love comics, you've got to work in comics. And uh, I think those are three fascinating routes in. And thank you so much for sharing them. Uh, and this has been New York Comic Con 2021. This has been the Titan Comics Life is Strange panel, where I have been talking about the concluding chapter of Life is Strange, Settling Dust, with this amazing editorial and creative team. So we have once more Emma Viacelli, Claudia Leonardi, and Phoebe Hedges, <laughs> along with Andrea, the brains trust behind all this Life is Strange comic book goodness. And um, come and check us out. Uh, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you've enjoyed this conversation with Emma and Claudia, if you check out Forbidden Planet TV on YouTube, you're going to see a load more of them going back <laughs> through the history of the project. <laughs> Um, you can all check us out. All <laughs> great stuff, and uh, and you can check us out at Comics Titan uh, at, on on Twitter. You can check us out at Titan Comics on Instagram. There's lots of stuff going on, but I can't wait to see this. Read this final concluding chapter. We're so excited to share it with you guys, and we're we're sorry, not sorry, if you cry. <laughs> <laughs> we all cried making it, so we're clicking it on you. <laughs> you 100 are going to cry. Thank you so much for uh, for chatting with everybody today, guys. And I look forward to burrowing deep into that final concluding chapter. I just can't wait. You all take care <laughs> of yourselves and it's cheerio from New York Comic Con 2021. Bye. Cheerio. Bye-bye. Bye. If you're enjoying watching Forbidden Planet TV and you're enjoying watching us talk to the world's most interesting and accomplished filmmakers, authors, artists, musicians, creators, subscribe right here. See you soon.